This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Man shot dead at halfway tree bus stop. A man was shot and killed Sunday afternoon on North Odeon Avenue in the vicinity of the Halfway Tree Transportation Center. According to alleged eyewitnesses, the man was standing at a bus stop when men on a motorcycle approached and opened fire hitting him. He died on the spot. A female was also shot and injured in the incident and has been taken to hospital. Man left traumatized and paranoid after witnessing brother's murder. Amid the terror, shock, and realization that his brother's life was snuffed out before him, Declan Gale helplessly turned to the killer and said, No, I'm a brother. His brother, 23 year old Darren Gale, was a window maker of Ancho District in the West Merland community. According to the police's Corporate Communications Unit report, Gale was among a group of people at a wake about 9 20 p.m. when he was pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened a fire at him. The others escaped unhurt. Declan told the news that his brother had sent him to call a female companion moments before he got shot. By the time I got linked to somebody, I see the alleged killer move off. But I not expect him to do nothing like that. Anyhow, I hear the first gunshot go off and I look round. And I hear the second one and I look round. Then I say no and I brother that. Then the person stop and look for me like him in a shock. Declan said his brother's killer started to render assistance by putting his wounded brother in the vehicle that was transporting him to the hospital. However, he fled the scene upon the arrival of the police. He said when he got to the hospital, the doctor later told him that his brother died. Still clad in his bloodstained clothes, Declan broke down in tears as he told the news that the incident has left him traumatized and paranoid. Every time I look upon the blood upon my pants, I remember him or see a picture of him. I always say, John, no, I can't believe. My brain, my paranoid. From last night, I didn't even take off the clothes them yet, he said. For his mother, Doreen Cargill, she is pondering on how she will bury not only her husband, but now her son. I lose the father and now I come back on losing by the gun. He gets shot the 29th of December and he died the 2nd of May this year. So that kind of get me, my head spinning. She, sh she shared seemingly distressed. The 50-year-old mother, who said she is a domestic helper, added that her children are never in need of anything. She added that her son had plans to work harder and to take care of her, but his life has been cut short. Me proud of him, cause him really stand out and him not give no trouble, honestly. She said Gail loved to stay inside, he only goes out when he has work. Him younger brother can attest to that. Him no left yard, him always a watch show. He's a showman, that's why him go get internet for the yard. He said they decided to show support to a friend who lost his mother as he worked with his dad before he died. I throw one of a friend mother die and we want to show support cause my father dead and him always work with him. Noting the reason his brother was not home Saturday night. He described his brother as a person who loved his work. He noted that the deceased would ensure that the family is well taken care of and would pay the bills. Commanding officer for Westmoreland, Senior Superintendent of Police Wayne Josephs told the news that the police have a person of interest. However, his name is being withheld pending further investigations. Statistics from the Jamaica Constabulary Force show that up to June 20, Westmoreland recorded 69 murders since the start of the year, when compared to 48 for the corresponding period last year. Kill Quick charged in robbery of millions from beryllium couriers. A 37 year old man has been charged in the robbery of approximately $22 million from couriers employed to security firm Beryllium in Kingston earlier this month. Emil Richards, otherwise called Kill Quick of Bray Street in Kingston, has been charged with robbery with aggravation, conspiracy to robbery with aggravation, illegal possession of firearm, and receiving stolen property. Richards was arrested on Friday and subsequently gave a caution statement, the police's corporate communications unit said in a statement today. About 12.10 p.m. on June 8, the employees of Beryllium, formerly guardsmen, were escorting money when their vehicle reportedly developed mechanical problems along Jackson Road in Rollington Town, Kingston. While fixing the vehicle, a motor car stopped beside them. Richards and another man armed with guns alighted from the vehicle, the police said. The employees ran in different directions, leaving the armored truck behind. 
The assailants have fled the scene with approximately $22 million. St. Catherine DJ charged with a murder. St. Catherine Dis jockey Omar Manderson, 26, has been charged with murdering a man in Gregory Park in the parish in May. Manderson is from Carlis Drive in Portmore, the police say. 41-year-old Mason Richard Bylaw Bloomfield of a Christian Gardens address in Gregory Park was shot dead on May 7. Manderson was arrested in Gregory Park on June 17, the day a state of public emergency was declared for St. Catherine. He is being charged with murder, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition. His court date is being finalized. The police say about 11.45 a.m. on May 7, Bloomfield and the women were standing on Oklahoma Lane when they were pounced upon by two men who shot at them. All three were taken to hospital where Bloomfield succumbed to his injuries and the women were admitted for treatment. Proposed the St. Catherine SOE regulations not constitutional PNP claims. The opposition People's National Party says it will not support regulations that the government has proposed to fully implement the St. Catherine state of emergency because they are not compliant with the constitution. Opposition leader and the party president Mark Golding made the disclosure Sunday at the party's National Executive Council meeting in St. Mary. Based on our review, those regulations do not pass the muster and there are amendments that have to be made to them before we will ever support them, said Golding. He did not give any specific provision that he claimed was not constitutional. Golding said he will be writing to Attorney General Dr. Derek McCoy on Monday to outline his party's position. The St. Catherine SOE was declared on June 17, but after 14 days, the government will need support from the opposition if it wants the measure to be extended. The government has the numbers to carry the motion in the House of Representatives, but it will need the backing of at least one opposition member in the Senate. The government proposed the new SOE regulations in the House last Thursday after admitting that ones introduced two days earlier were not correct. Recent court rulings on past SOE regulations have forced the Holness administration to revise the procedures to comply with the Constitution and the Jamaicans' right to liberty and freedom of movement. Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of National Security, Dr. Harris Chang, says a probe has been launched into the tabling of the wrong resolution. He also said that persons currently detained since the SOE declaration have been arrested under the Jamaica Constabulary Force Act and not under the regulations. An upsurge in murders triggered by an internal feud in the One Order Gang prompted imposition of the SOE in St. Catherine, the government said. Under states of emergency, members of the security forces get extraordinary powers that impact people's fundamental rights. Members of the security forces may search places without a warrant and arrest and obtain people without the usual constitutional constraint of having to quickly take detainees before the courts for hearings or bail. Two men arrested after firearm seizure in Lucy. The Hanover police seized a Taurus 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 12 rounds of ammunition at the Old Penn Hopewell in Hanover on Sunday, June 26. Reports are that about 4.30 a.m., a joint police military team was on patrol in the area when the driver of a bike was signaled to stop. The driver and the pillion were searched and a weapon was found in a bag that was being carried by the pillion. Both men were arrested for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Police say that investigations are ongoing. 164 new COVID-19 cases in Jamaica, six deaths reported. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 164 new COVID-19 cases and the six deaths on Saturday, June 26, bringing the infection total to 142,440 and the total deaths to 3,119. The new cases comprise 100 females and 64 males with ages ranging from 56 days to 92 years. The cases were recorded as follows, Kingston and St. Andrew 58, St. Catherine 25, St. James and St. Mary 18 each, Portland 10, Clarendon and Trelawney 7 each, St. Thomas and Westmoreland 6 each, Manchester 5, St. Elizabeth 3, and Hanover 1. 
The deceased include a 93-year-old male from St. James in January 2022, an 82-year-old male from Clarendon previously under investigation from February 2022, a 64-year-old male from St. James, a 53-year-old male from St. James, and a 78-year-old female from Portland and an 88-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew for June 2022. There were 82 recoveries in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to 90,561. Currently, 110 people are hospitalized, 34 of whom are moderately ill, 6 severely ill and 4 critically ill. Jamaica's positivity rate for the latest round of testing is 20.4%. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.